Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what is a cycle? We're talking, of course, about cycles in graph theory. So let's get right into the lesson, and in order to start talking about cycles, we're going to need a graph. So let's go into hyperspeed, and I'll put together a nice, beautiful graph that we can use. All right, so here is our beautiful graph. I've labeled the vertices V1 through V7. So what is a cycle, and what's an example of a cycle in this graph? Well, if you think about what we traditionally mean by the word cycle and the symbols that we use to represent cycles, I think you'll find that cycles in graph theory are pretty intuitive. So let's see one. I will draw one for you in this graph. One of the cycles in this graph starts at V2, then goes to the adjacent vertex, V3, then to the adjacent vertex, V4, then to the adjacent vertex, V7, and then returns to the adjacent vertex, V2, that we started at. So a cycle in a graph is a way of moving through a graph, and you can see that a cycle is a very smooth way of moving through a graph. But of course, we like to be able to represent things in more formal ways than just a bunch of badly drawn circles and arrows. Thankfully, we can represent this cycle more formally as a sequence of vertices. We started at V2, then went to V3, then to V4, then to V7, and then returned to V2. So this is what a cycle is. A cycle is a sequence of vertices in a graph such that consecutive vertices are adjacent and all vertices are distinct except for the first and the last vertex, which are required to be the same. And you can see that by moving between adjacent vertices, we're traversing through edges of the graph. The number of edges that are traversed in a cycle is called the cycle's length. And in order for it to be a cycle, its length has to be greater than or equal to 3. The length of a cycle that is represented by a sequence of vertices is one less than the number of vertices in this sequence. We can see that here because V2, V3 is an edge that gets traversed. V3, V4 is an edge that gets traversed. V4, V7 is an edge that gets traversed. And V7, V2 is an edge that gets traversed. So that's four edges, a length of four which is one less than the number of vertices, because there are five vertices in the sequence. Since this cycle has a length of four, we can refer to it as a four cycle. And of course, we use similar terminology for other similar situations. So if we were looking at a cycle of length eight, we could call that an eight cycle. All right, so that is enough of talking about length. There's some other stuff we need to get to before we bring this lesson to a close. Quick recap of what we were saying earlier. We can think of a cycle as a sequence of vertices in a graph so that consecutive vertices are adjacent and all vertices in the sequence are distinct except for the first and last vertex which are required to be the same. And drawing that sort of way of moving through the graph gives us this very smooth motion. You should know that there are other ways you might see cycles being represented besides just a sequence of vertices. You might see a cycle being represented as a sequence of edges instead. So this method just uses the edges that were traversed instead of the vertices. But it does indeed refer to the exact same way of moving through this graph. To find the length of a cycle when it's being represented by a sequence of edges, of course, all you have to do is count all the edges in the sequence. This gives a length of four, as we would expect since it refers to the same cycle. Another way you might see cycles being represented is as an alternating sequence of vertices and edges. This method begins with the vertex you start at, then the edge you traverse, then the vertex you arrive at, then the edge that you traverse, then the vertex you arrive at, and so on. So a cycle in a graph is just a way of moving through a graph, and those are a few ways that cycles can be represented. Remember that we said in a cycle, no vertices can be repeated except the first and the last vertex, which are required to be the same. This also implies that no edge can be traversed more than once. But there is a slightly different definition of cycle that is sometimes used that says you still can't repeat edges, but you can repeat vertices. So looking at this graph again, here's an example of a cycle that follows this slightly different definition that is sometimes used. 
this cycle goes from V3 to V7 to V4 to V5 to V6 back to V7 and then to V2 and then finishes at V3. I know it looks like quite a mess, but the point here is that a slightly different definition is sometimes used for the term cycle, in which we can repeat vertices, but we still are not allowed to repeat edges. You can see in this example, well maybe you can see, maybe not, uh, the vertex here, V7, is repeated, but no edge is repeated. And when that definition is used, the cycles that we were talking about earlier are sometimes referred to specifically as simple cycles, cycles that repeat no vertices. And remember that by either definition, a cycle's length must be greater than or equal to 3, and its length is the number of edges traversed in the cycle. The term cycle is also often used not to describe a way of moving through a graph, but to describe a specific type of graph. We'll go over that more in detail in another lesson, but I did want to mention it briefly here. So that's just a little bit about cycles, and of course, knowing what cycles are, you can start to ask some other interesting questions, like, does every graph have at least one cycle? How many cycles does a particular graph have? If not every graph has a cycle, then what sorts of graphs don't, and what sorts of graphs do? There are a lot of interesting questions we can start to ask and explore now that we know about cycles. So with that said, I hope this video helped you understand what cycles are in graph theory. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.